following presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. You know, we have Tom from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing? Nico? Good. Great. Good. Hey, uh, your newsletter is outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Run my Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 Seven six six four eight. Now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning. I'm Nico DeHaan. Welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. To recover our natural health and to regain our rights and freedoms. Good morning. I'm Paige Clark. And it's a beautiful morning in downtown St. Petersburg. It's 78 degrees and kind of balmy, but it's uh, getting cooler tomorrow. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Hey, yep. make sure you subscribe to our Health Signals newsletter. This is news you can lose. Come use comes into your inbox twice a month and uh, kind of follows our show uh have you been you know we got the flu season coming up hopefully you're doing things to build your immune system that's for sure you need to do and that. that doesn't include a flu shot <laughs> that's for <laughs> darn sure and please pick up a primal edge our one shot wonder over 310 cell ready liquid ingredients so it's easy to take and of course oh, yeah based on uh, fulvic and humic acid to get the good stuff in and the bad stuff out and call us this morning join our show at 877-927-6648 now we had a, a uh, somebody write us about the uh, fulvic acid and humic acid you answered them on... um actually i need to follow up on that yeah. i i did answer with the fact that um he, I, he was questioning some research that was um you had some concerns on on um fulvic humic mm -hmm. And I've answered him that there were probably a couple hundred studies that showed positive effects. Sure. And I, I, that's still to follow up. I'll have to follow up on okay, that. Cool. Yeah, I sent it to you. I want to yeah. want to kind of follow up on that later. Okay. Um, today I want to start off with. Let's see where we are. Yeah. Well, you know, Potential. you always keep us. You always keep us posted on the weather, on the both local and what's really happening in the weather. And I think it's really important that we give people a perspective of what's really responsible for our climate changes that mm -hmm. are happening. Yeah, it's certainly. not the story that we're being told and sold in the mainstream media. It's not us, it's the sun. It's the sun, As yeah, David but they want to they want to blame us because they can extract a few more tax dollars. Yeah, that's it. That's all about the taxes. Now, the sun continues to be very quiet. It's been without sunspots on 200 days during uh, 2019, or 72% of the time. And a quiet sun means more... Cosmic rays. Cosmic rays and more activity that happens like earthquakes and yeah, volcanoes. Yeah. In fact, and this there was an interesting uh, article the other day from Cambridge saying oh. that uh, the uh, tie in between earthquakes and storms. Oh, really? So uh, they had, uh, of course, the storm up in, um, uh, was in Japan and they had the earthquake. Uh, you know, along with it, and this, this is a common thing. Well, this p particular picture that we see on no sunspots, the, uh, no sunspots. There's no spots on the sun. It says the sun is blank again today for the 200th day, and 219 is a solar minimum deepens. That's from yeah, NASA. Yeah, solar a low solar activity has been well correlated with the atmospheric phenomenon as the high latitude blocking, mm -hmm. and this could play an important role in the upcoming winter season. Uh, one of the natural impacts of decreased solar, solar activity is the weakening of the ambient solar wind and its magnetic field, which in turn allows more cosmic rays to penetrate the solar system. And when we have more cosmic rays, as we've mentioned, we have more weather anomalies, whether it be hot or cold or both. Mm -hmm. And then as a result, we see crop changes. And when crops change, you know, crop loss occurs, then we have famines and starvations. And history repeats itself. Yeah, and uh, remember we had a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the Ice Age Farmer podcast, mm -hmm. and he had the farmer on from Ohio who was saying not only were his fields the problem and his, his own livestock, but he noticed that the wild animals were coming in for more food because there's less food in the less wild. Less food for the wild. And then you and I are always trying to connect the dots for people here. What are we seeing? A real push to feeling shameful for eating animals and yeah, animal-based foods, and, and you need to eat a bunch of cellulose that we're not really designed to digest. <laughs> yeah, and, and, like... and I see all these people posting pictures of their complete plant-based diets, and, and I, I get real concerned because they're yeah. buying into the hype. 
And this is uh, part of the talk that I'm going to be giving next summer uh, at uh, the uh, frontier, you know, observing the frontier with Ben Davidson. Yeah, you're going to that. Yeah, I'm going to I that. Have to come and see and you I'm speak. giving a talk on the uh, correlation between our diet and these catastrophes that help, you know, that happened every few thousand years, up to 12,000 years where you have that real big one. But every time there's something bad happens, we turn to the food that saves our lives, these things that we can store. Right. Now, we talked last week about the bone marrow being used. The first canned the, food. The, the first canned food, you right. know. But, I had some this weekend, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, excellent. Yeah, you have that beautiful restaurant up there that has that. Oh, no, no, no. That's Actually, a there's a new restaurant in Tampa called The Meat Market. Oh. you got to go. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, sounds, okay. sounds right up my alley. Anyway, uh, what they were talking about was that, uh, you know, we always have packaged food, and if Katie has a problem we throw them a bunch of rice we mm -hmm. throw them corn whatever we can yeah, but we don't throw them, we don't throw them ribeyes or barbecue oh. or mm -hmm. anything like that so these starvation foods have become part of the whole trend but it, as i often say the bread becomes the holy bread because it saves your life and then it goes into your traditions. Got it. So we so we actually revere it because it saves our lives. Right. Not because it's necessarily healthy. No, not as healthy. Right. It saved our lives. And we need it for sure. But we have to realize we have to transition back when the food becomes good again. Yeah. So there you go. And which we haven't done. Now, a thousand years ago might not may have made that much difference. Now the study shows that it did make quite a bit of difference. Our health has gone downhill from ten thousand years ago until now. And we're going to talk about that in a couple yeah. articles here but, about the But if we look at the, the last three hundred years and the last hundred years, it's really accelerated. Back. It absolutely has. And then we never go back to the real good foods that we go. We keep pushing these agricultural foods because they saved their lives. And the social again. and the social engineering is really reinforcing that from a spiritual level. Yeah, and you're talking... Shame on you for eating food right, that you're supposed to Right, but not only that, remember, we're talking about an economy that has to have profit above everything else, above our health, above everything else. And there's a lot of profit in packaged foods. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So just to wrap this one up, consequences of the increased cosmic rays, which is what you've been telling us for years, way ahead of the curve, mm -hmm. along with Ben Davidson, that, that it truly is the sun's solar cycles that are changing our weather. Number one, cli climate change and cloud cover. We're seeing more cloud cover in general. And uh, there's also a threat to air travelers. Right. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but increased cosmic rays have an impact on the Earth's cloud cover and climate, and it can impact travelers. And, of course, the farther north you go, the thinner the atmosphere is. When you go, go up to the polar regions, mm -hmm. there's less protection there. So the more you fly north, the worse it is. Right. And so this could impact perhaps pilots' ability to use radar and those kind of things. Yeah. Well, not use radar, just the health part. Okay, just yeah. the fact that you're being exposed yeah. to the radiation, and which is another thing, guys. You here. want to take antioxidants after you're on the plane. You yeah. really do. Mm -hmm. you really iodine do. is a good thing to take, too. And also, uh, yeah, exactly. I, well, iodine is great for everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, the master antioxidant, the master antibiotic, for yeah. sure. But so you can see that the trend here from 2009-10, that uh, these things go into a cycle. In about every 10 or 11 years. 10 or 11 years, yeah, we have these peaks again. Here's the maximum. This mm -hmm. is the minimum. So the cosmic rays are high. And that's what we've been talking and about. And you guys that are doing the stock market, you know, there's a little bit of uh, trending with the stock market on that. There's people yeah. that study that. Yeah. So when we get back, I want to talk a little bit more about the sun and then go into uh, some of the other things that cause problems in our health. Absolutely. We'll, we'll take right a back. short break. Stick with us. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey, hey, welcome back. Nico and I have been talking a little bit about climate change and the real cause of climate change which is the changes in our solar system. And uh, life on Earth has long been shaped by this continuous exposure to environmental electromagnetic frequencies, natural and artificial ones. And this exchange of energy between the solar wind plasma and our Earth's magnetic field is driven by a quasi-periodic cycle. You mentioned cycle. it. An 11-year cycle, which generates short-term geometric geomagnetic disturbances. And this will affect the physiology, the standard metabolism, and the behavior pattern of humans and animals. This is fascinating, folks. And this headline says, the geomagnetic disturbances driven by the solar activity enhances total and cardiovascular mortality risk in over 263 United States cities. Take a look at this map. Take a look at this map. Hey, I think you probably find your city on there. We sure do see ours. <laughs> yeah, that's right there for sure. And so of again, course, uh, when you get more population, the more problems too. In a sense, more people, as Jack Cruz yeah. has always taught us, density is an issue, and the use of all the artificial mag electromagnetic frequencies is is then enhancing the the solar uh, magnetic uh, fluxes that we're dealing with. Yeah, and this is a, an interesting thing because uh, this, uh, these disturbances are not good for their, our health. But there's another side to this because this is when we see species changing. We see uh, new species arriving, mm -hmm. old species dying. So there's something else going on here that we don't quite understand. Uh, there's a lot of things that with heart disease and neurological disease. Uh, it affects our uh, bodies negatively. So we have to be sure during these low periods of solar activity where we have more cosmic rays coming in to be healthier than ever. That's exactly right because cardiovascular disease and coronary heart disease and stroke continue to be the major cause of death for all regions worldwide. Heart disease has been the first leading cause of death since the 1900s. <laughs> And uh, that was interesting because around the 1900s, some guy uh, created the electrocardiogram yes. and he took it to Harvard. Right. And they said, what the heck are you doing this for? 
there's no heart disease. Right. It really was non-existent. No, and then it had our to modern d diet, however, and our modern living uh, mm -hmm. has changed all that. And uh, you, you kind of think, okay, they invented this machine, and now we need something to do with this machine. So they kind of invented the heart disease and at the same what, time. And kind of what's sense. going on is these electromagnetic frequencies impact our sympathetic and our parasympathetic nervous system, the activities of the autonomic nervous system. And, and are, it regulates functions such as your heart rate variability, your breathing, yeah, so and your metabolic Yeah, so all these automatic processes. systems that are there taking place that we kind of take for granted and don't even notice, mm -hmm. they're being disturbed. Right. And not just in us, but in the animals also. Absolutely. And this is why you see different animal migrations, of course, when we have different planting areas and different eating areas being taken offline, mm -hmm. there are other ones maybe coming online, and that's where the animals move. But we've certainly seen a different trend here, and this is, shows you some of the cosmic rays that comes in here on mm -hmm. the screen. So. Is it, this article, I've got to double check on this. It's kind mm -hmm. of got two uh, confusing comments here. I want to maybe uh, during the break you and I can discuss this. Okay. But I want people to understand low heart rate variability is actually associated with a 32 to 45 percent increased risk of a first cardiovascular event in populations um, that have cardiovascular risk yeah and uh, it's also the opposite if you have the if you have those fast bursts going on it affects those also well that, there, that's there's a difference between yeah, heart is. rate variability and um, like tachycardia that's right. th they're not the same thing no but they're all affected by cosmic rays is what they're saying mm -hmm. yeah so you know again folks we are impacted by changes in the weather it's not just about the food although we'll talk more about that in the next uh, Comment. Maybe it's a good time to switch well, on Well, what I want to do right now is switch to the other article that we had about our skulls because you've been deeply immersed in this, and I think it's an important thing to understand that we have evolved differently. Uh, as a result. As a result of our poor nutrition, as a result of weather changes and things like this. But mm -hmm. here's a study that they're talking about that our skulls are out-evolving us. In other words, our skulls are actually shrinking like you've talked to us about it, about your jaw go, going in, and this author has a quite extensive uh, right. things about this. Well, it's so. really a multifactorial thing, Nico, but as you know, I am passionate about this because um, I do believe that many times we think we're improving things, mm -hmm. and we get move into the field of orthodontia and dentistry, and in fact, we've really kind of screwed things up. Excuse my little mm -hmm. French there. Well, this uh, author has a daughter, uh, Micah, at age four, underwent a sleep study and received diagnosis of apnea, intermittent waking during the, you know, because of the blocked airway. Blocked airways. airway. Mm -hmm. And a surgeon removed the tonsils and the adenoids, and the operation seemed to work for a while. Uh, fluids no longer collected in his ears. I guess it was a he and not a she. Mm -hmm. But a year later, he still snored. Possible sign of more congestion, uh, obstruction. It was back to the ear and the nose and throat doctor to rule out the apnea. So, and, and so we'll continue this, but uh, I think we're going on a break yeah, unless our clock's off. But this was me. You know, yes. adenoids and tonsils out, little tiny thing, wasn't wasn't growing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, through breastfeeding. My mom abandoned that because of where, what it really was, was an airway obstruction, small bones, uh -huh. lack of jaw, jaw development. And I'm really passionate about this. I wish I could just run around and teach these young parents um, that we all have to start adopting a, a lifestyle. We've got a lot of things coming at us that yes. are really impacting all this, yeah. and we can we can make a change. Well, and that's the reason that uh, we always say, you know, our, we our health system, the uh, immune system that we have, needs to be boosted on a regular basis by what we eat and the activities that we have, mm -hmm. and then some common sense things about staying out of the sun and going into the sun whenever you know we need to do those things, and we need to do those on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, we need to be healthy, and uh, it seems like we're going backwards well, and, and as a fact, species. And in fact, I think, I think there's some real validity to that point. But what I want to say about this young, this young parent with a young child, they are experiencing what so many people are. Their children are having ADHD. They're unhappy. They're whiny. They misbehave. They're not focusing in school because they're not sleeping. And they're not sleeping because they're not breathing. And they're not breathing because their jaws aren't developing. And we're not eating the hard foods that we needed to eat. And this all happened when we went to accepting the starvation foods yeah, as a staple. In fact, this author talks about taking uh, his, her uh, son to a therapist. and uh, Over and saying, over. ENT and then a dentist. Yeah. And they all center in circles. Yeah. And 
one of the things they said that it was wild because the kid kept getting wilder, jumping all over the place, mm -hmm. being restless and not uh, cooperating. And this mm -hmm. was because of the result of the non-sleeping and being agitated naturally. Right, exactly. Science suggests that crooked teeth, overbites, narrow jaws, and crimping nasal airways as, as a modern... As a modern phenomenon, yeah. something that's happened in the last 250 years. Skeleton remains show that just 300 years ago, human common, uh, commonly displaced straight, perfectly aligned uh, teeth and wide, wide jaw, jaws. flat palates, and large nasal passages that signal... Uh, habil habitual. Ability and now, habitual, habitual, healthy, healthy breathing. breathing. Yeah, excuse me. So really, when they talk about flat palates, I mean, if you look at them, 90% of people's mouth, they have an arch in their palate. We're not supposed to have an arch. It's supposed to be kind of flat. flat. I was, you know, I was watching um, uh, a, a video last night of soul music from the 70s. Oh. And I was watching some of the singers when they leaned back and their palates were almost flat. Wow. There was no arch in it. Beautiful teeth. And it made me, you know, I, I constantly am studying um, faces because this is crucial to what's going on with our health. But more recently, our faces have begun to deform. Today, our skulls are markedly high, narrow palates, short lower jaws, meaning the length from the chin uh, angled down, not straight out. This is interesting stuff, and you can start connect dots. We'll yeah, be right we'll be back right. to finish up. like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of performance training since 1998 Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically as a certified personal trainer Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions the performance training studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balance results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. And welcome back. You know, uh, more recently, our faces have begun to deform. Today, our skulls are marked by high, na narrow palates and shorter 
lower draws, uh, jaws and significant uh, space that is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the scientists, there's a whole group of these scientists now and health providers these that are... These are the kind of people that I'm seeing. Yeah, I'm exactly. Talking. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. investigating how faces are changing and the ramifications for our health. It includes dentists in Chicago, uh, Philadelphia, anthropologists. Oh, people all over. I mean, like, yeah. I'm every, but they're not everywhere yet. No. They haven't caught up to the science. But these professionals argue that it's the modern life which has disrupted this complex biological systems in our faces. Going our back heads. to how Nico and I opened up the show. It's affecting our faces, our heads and our throats, leading to airway problems. And these are problems that people are experiencing, such as jaw pain. Who do you know that has jaw pain, can't breathe, using CPAPs at night, chronic headaches, allergy? asthma, sleep disruption, and all of these associated disorders. And my many factors contribute to these issues. There's diet and technology exposure. Hey, yep. could that even lead more into right. like our show today? Uh, Pollution to in the air. I mean, there could be so many and, things. Yeah, to the parenting and social changes. We're seeing evolutionary causes as crucial to understanding and addressing this problem. And, you know, Why I'm, are we not growing good yeah. faces and, and heads? Another thing, parenting, we mentioned that, and you mentioned breastfeeding, huge mm -hmm. thing, because now we're not doing that much anymore. Uh, all these parenting things, we give our children away very quickly, two or three years, and now you've got babysitters, you've got strangers in your house bringing up your children. This is this is huge. Well, the other thing about parenting is Indian mothers when the when the child was sitting there, the child had their listen to your jaw for a second. Ch if the child's sitting there like this, the mother would shut it. Yeah, shut it. Yeah. And so the child would develop good or what we call good oral posture. Well, the breastfeeding alone does that too. Mm, it sure does. Yeah. And how many women are told they can't breastfeed, this, which it just boggles the mind. No, and a lot of that has to the do with the child. The reason they can't breastfeed is their child has a tongue tie. Exactly. And so it's really a multifactorial situation that's created a tremendous stress on our long-term health and, 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 and viability. I, th I think what's made it worse is all these modern convenience to make those switches over. The soft you know, food. The soft food, the, uh, the bottles, uh, showing people how to uh, bottle feed your uh, child, which is important maybe later on, but I think uh, you switch from the nipple, uh, the breast, that's to exactly, hard food. To hard, that's exactly what primal mothers did. I mean, their, their babies may have had to chew on like little roots, like sassafras. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, it really is something, and I'm gonna. I, I want you to put this in the newsletter. They all go in if there. you have a child or an older person or yourself that's having any of these issues that are related to breathing and sleep quality and behavior, take a look at where the problem may be. I always say most of our health issues arise between our cranium and our clavicle. If we can get this area straight, then we can be healthier. So the next article, and wh what we're doing is we're picking out articles that really affect our health. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is a, just another one. Most U.S. dairy cows are descended from just two bulls. And that's not good, guys. Now stop and think about it. And I'll tell you something. This article does not address uh, a crucial comment about this, but I guarantee you these two bulls are A1 cows, yes, not are. the preferred A2 breed that makes up the cows in 90% yeah. of the rest so of the, the world. So the farmers many, many but years... listen, Nico, I want that point to get yeah, through. And the, the rest of the world has a, for, a breed of cow that does not create inflammation. That's right. And the reason, A1 does. And the reason that the cows were chosen that we have over here is because they produce more milk and get fatter faster. It's for economic reasons, not for health reasons. We know that the A2 cows are much healthier for us. Exactly. We are able to digest the casein proteins in an A2 cow, not so with the A1. In fact, there's tremendous research uh, at PubMed about the difference in the inflammatory response between the two milk. It's as if it's a different species altogether. It is in a sense. Yeah. So how did this happen? There's this company called Select Sires. Hmm. And Select Sires uh, gives all these farmers uh, a catalog. And what happened over the last 25, 30, 40 years is most of the cow uh, has, that have been chosen, the bull has been chosen for their semen, are these two cows who are just top-notch. I mean, why? If you were a <laughs> farmer, you'd want this bull to be siring oh, all, all your you calves. Something. That whole bull breeding thing is a real... Oh, yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen the podcast and stuff on that? Well, I've never seen a podcast on it, but for a period of time in the 70s, my dad owned a bunch of bulls oh. with a bunch of investors. Mm -hmm. And I remember just the conversations. It was so, you know... 
It was so male. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, the farmers have been choosing these two bulls over all others, and it turns out that now they're a really dominant species. Lots of mothers and grandmothers out there and great-grandmothers, but just these two bulls siring everything. Of course, they're, not, they're doing it artificially because they're selling the semen. This is how it goes. Oh, wow, it's so wild. Yeah, so uh, that's a problem. Naturally, uh, in breeding, we always want the most diversity. Yeah. This is why the, uh, when you're in an Indian camp and you have the tent uh, with maybe 30, 40 families around, and now you want to hook up with a gal, you're, you're hooking up not with a gal from your own village. You go outside. Outside. Yeah. Oh, well, and that's we where know. the adventure is. Well, we this. know how we see uh, this intermarriage stuff doesn't really work out well for many of the royals. In no, terms and the of grass is always greener. I mean, this is a natural tendency for us. Uh, I remember when I was in high school, we used to... To get to our high school, we had to walk past the Catholic school. Mm -hmm. And all those cute little girls in those cute little plaid skirts that were there, <laughs> all us guys wanted those girls, not the ones at our school, you right, know, right, because right. they were untouchable. We didn't know them. That's <laughs> kind of the way it works. So that's the way I see that happening. Yeah, so listen to this. Um, you know, traditionally, dairy farmers didn't like cows with extra body fat. They thought the ideal cow was a skinny one because she was turning all of her feed into milk, not fat. So farmers chose bulls that tended to produce this kind of a daughter. We've kind of selected for tall, thin cows, and that's really a bad combination. They're infertile, unhealthy, so we need to get away from that. And that's something. Hmm. So, yeah, they're talking about this frozen semen from those long-forgotten heirloom bulls can bring back valuable genes that went missing, maybe genes wow. that would allow cows to thrive in warmer temperatures, for instance. Did you know that Florida is one of the biggest dairy, yeah, dairy and, and for uh, beef and for dairy. Yeah. Second, I mean, a lot of people don't realize. It. I I understand it's because of the, of the. Um, because all the cows we have. And the weather, yeah. you know, and the fact that we have green grass. But unfortunately, I don't think many of them are getting out on the grass as we would like to think. Uh, there's quite a few actually. There's, well, I mean, I enjoy it when you go up 75 and yeah. you see, you know. Yeah. You know, but but the, uh, their uh, cows are not indigenous here at all. I mean, they're not indigenous to even mm -hmm. America. You know, so. Look, but again, engineered food, right? Yep. And we don't have um, what, you know, I would tell any of you, I think dairy is a superfood when it's raw and unpasteurized and when it's an A2 breed. Yep. So how do you do that? Uh, well, you support a local farmer is what you do that actually has changed their their cow population to include A2 breeds. And there were other other milks, too. We were talking about the, the before there's, the show, the, the camel milk, the emu mm -hmm. milk. There's yeah, all kinds of really yeah. good milks out there goat, that goat, aren't even pasteurized. Right. Goat and uh, camel's milk are both naturally A2. Yeah. Yeah. But a thing I think to do if you're really interested in this, you know, read the article, but also visit your farmer. Visit the people mm -hmm. who are raising these cows. Then you can see how they're raised. Then you can kind of get a feeling, is this for me or not? Exactly. And that's an important thing. And talk about getting to a farmer. Can we go to this article, Stew This, the healthiest hens on the market? You know, we've been yeah. talking a lot about uh, supporting a local farmer. And, Nico, you are a great supporter of White Oak Pastures in Georgia. I love that place. And, uh, you know, we're going to be visiting on our way back uh, from uh, Michigan. Well, let's go after yeah, the break. Yeah, we'll talk we'll about talk it about after this. the break. We'll be right back, folks. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And welcome back. And we're talking about uh, white oak pastures in uh, Georgia, South no Georgia. One a, no one a good farmer. Yeah, and this is, uh, you know, when I started buying from them uh, maybe about eight years ago, and I haven't in the last couple of years bought because we have somebody closer, mm -hmm. but I'm going to go back. They have some new things, too. They have these uh, great uh, uh, pigs from Spain with the extra fat in them. The it's Iberian. Iberian, mm -hmm. yes. Those things are just fantastic pigs. I found out I have Iberian blood when I did oh, my genetic test. Yeah. So. It was those Spanish guys that yeah. were liking those Irish girls. Yeah, <laughs> can't blame them. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, this is a great place, and you really need to go. And they, they have, uh, I think there's a video on here. Well, I like what he says. So. They, they believe the white oak pastures, uh, stewing hens, make the best stewed soups and broths. Our ladies get plenty of activity, spending their days laying eggs, scratching the soil to forage for grub, and roosting on our pastures. And they have little videos on here showing you how they butcher things and uh, how to uh, make uh, great soups and stews and things like that. But uh, the they nice really thing about... They provide a great resource. Well, not only that, you go there, you can go take a little tour with them, you can buy from them. Road trip. Yeah, and uh, you can uh, actually stay overnight. They have little cottages there. So you can really get the whole feel of how a farmer like this and his family do things. And I think it's an important thing to do. That's very good. Yeah, and that's what we really want to encourage you to do is to get to know your local farmers um, or even just in farmers that are in our United States. Now with the Internet, you can order online and they'll ship to your home. But we want to find ethical farmers that are raising food that really helps us uh, optimize our genetic potential yeah, and, just, and that and of our children. The recipes on their website are grass-fed beef, uh, pastured pork, grass-fed lamb, pastured poultry, grass-fed goats, and pastured rabbits. Mm -hmm. So they have lots and lots of stuff, and I think it's really interesting to go there and see this. But the important thing is that this is nutrition, and this is the way we used to do it in the old days, three, four hundred years ago. So uh, I think it's important to maybe learn a few things from people that uh, are, are doing, doing it, it right. Now. Yeah, exactly. Well, Nico, what I'd like to go to now is there's Germany prepares for the end of glyphosate. And this made me very happy. Dr. Stephanie Seneff from mm -hmm. MIT, who we follow a lot, um, who's been educating all of us on the dangers of glyphosate, posted um, the fact that Austria, which is uh, a place that I go to frequently, uh, has completely refused glyphosate. And I'm so proud to get off that plane when we arrive there and smell the cow manure. <laughs> <laughs> because when you land there, man, you smell the, you smell the farms. 
But there's something beautiful about the fact that they're recycling and the grass is green. And you know it's working. But Germany, this article is uh, Germany prepares for the end of glyphosate. And this is good news that Germany is, in, in fact, planning. And there's not really a lot here for whatever reason, this article. Well, but I, just I, wanted have, to read the I headline. have something to think about this because mm -hmm. I know that, uh, of course, the companies that uh, we're talking about are based in Germany. Mm -hmm. The uh, aspirin company, Bear Aspirin, mm -hmm. who owns the glyphosate, uh, this whole mm -hmm. thing. I'm just wondering if now they're coming out with something new. Well, that you know, that could very well be because glyphosate is no longer under patent. So a right. lot of people don't understand that even when we talk about Monsanto's Roundup being awful, Roundup is now off patent. So a lot of people go, oh, I got a different weed killer. No, you don't want any of those that use that pathway, the chemical pathway, for and sure. I tell you, it's a real pull to use this stuff because it's easy. You just spray mm -hmm. it on and the weed dies rather than getting on your knees and pulling it out. Yeah. But uh, it says Germany's phase out of glyphosate will begin next year with the pesticides prohibition in private gardens and parks, spe specific nat nature protection zones, and protected ecologically sensitive areas, public areas, and for crop desiccation. Uh, boy, um, so there you go. Uh, you know, Germany has been using glyphosate. Um, Austria has not. So it's a little small piece of land heaven. but uh yeah exactly a little bit of heaven and, and we should appreciate that yeah that's for sure mm -hmm. a couple of articles i like to go on one is the uh the type of things that are actually loud in our food uh this article is called uh what the heck uh, shocking filth uh allowed in our food <laughs> this is not much fun actually but there are some tolerances of course that the fda sets and you might not exactly be aware of what those tolerance, uh, tolerances are. Did you know that there can be on up to 450 insect parts and nine rodent hairs in every 16-ounce box of spaghetti? Yeah, they, they allow, uh, there's a tolerance level that many of us would probably find really quite shocking, I'm sure. Yeah, chocolate can contain instant, inst, uh, insect fa fragments and rodent hairs. If you're eating a regular chocolate bar, 43 grams, it might legally contain 30 or more insect parts and some rodent hairs. A Bloody Mary juice, the uh, 14 ounces of Bloody Mary, can contain up to four maggots and 20 or more and fruit special. flies. <laughs> well, well, you need I, the alcohol in there just to sterilize everything. So, again, um, I, I believe that this all could be in the very factory food. But I look at the political thing. This comes from uh, CNN uh, which we know also is working very hard to claim that we're not, you know, um, that we're not, you know, protecting our food sources. There's a little bit of political bias there. Well, the thing is, uh, I think what you have to look at, if you go to your farm. Know your food. Yeah, you know go to your, your local food. place, then you're going to be much better off because mm -hmm. these people take care about this thing. That picture so some, is just a some factory worker that's uh, making spaghetti or any of these spices or chocolate may not care that this stuff is in there. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I've been in uh, pizza places. I used to work at a pizza place. I used to see people putting stuff in pizza just for the heck of it and spitting in it and just gross things that people do. So very important, fix your own food. And yet you wonder, okay, so we're, we're, we're thinking about all this food stuff and we're thinking, well, geez, they've got all these terrible things in the food, just poor hygiene. But yet, then why don't we just slow down and do a better job? But here's an article in Bloomberg that says the world loses $400 billion in food before it even reaches the stores. What? What kind of waste are we doing and here? If you, when you dive into that article, the interesting thing is most of it is produce. Yes, yeah, some 14% of all food produced is lost annually, with Central and Southern Asia, North America, and Europe accounting for the biggest shares. Something. Food wastage is drawing increased scrutiny because of the contribution to green. Here we go again. Contribution to greenhouse gas emissions. <laughs> they always have to and put as, that in there. Well, again, it's it's all these left leaning. Sorry, I'm just going to say it. You know, mm -hmm. you know, they they they've got their 4 a.m. talking points. That yeah, they and produce if it's not their, left leaning, it's going to be right leaning. So it's leaning one way or the other. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really make any mm -hmm. difference. Ah, uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> uh, but this, you know, there's tons of food loss. That's for sure. And perhaps that's where we need to go back. You and I talked about it a couple shows ago, about how farmers um, are that follow traditional methods use cycling. The chickens eat the poop. They move the chickens. The cows roam. Yeah. And 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 this all gets out of balance when we don't follow these things. Yeah, it's a challenge uh, because more information is needed in order to take the effective action. Uh, cold storage crucial. 
uh, mm -hmm. you know, but a lot of these things are not used in cold storage. I mean, sure, the animal uh, products and things like that are, but fruit and vegetables generally not. Cereals definitely not. The, the cereals used to sit in the bins for, you know, these big silos for four or five years. Yeah, you, you, know, you talk all, about rat poop and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's all in there. That's why they have to sift it and stuff. But the, not, none of it, I mean, when it's dried, you're going get, to get that stuff in there. So think small. Think your, you know, think your small grocery person. Find, find a butcher if you can and deal with those people and you're going to be much better off. Well, and it's important that we, how we choose our food, but I want to go to this last article here. A new study says there could be a surprising consequence to losing weight later in life. Okay. That's, we're going to tell you about that because all of us think about losing weight, but could there be a reason to keep a little bit on as we get older? We'll be right back after this break. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. Nico and I were talking about a new study that says there could be a surprising consequence to losing weight later in life. This is kind of a, a little bit of a switch. Being overweight has always been linked to many health problems, and shedding pounds is awfully presented as a good idea, but that's, it's not quite that simple. And a new study published this Wednesday in the British Medical Journal examines the link between changes in body weight and the risk of premature death. Yeah, the researchers uh, found the association between weight gain and mortality weakens as you get older. And weakens. Lose, yeah, mm. so if you lose weight in middle age or late adulthood, it might uh, heighten the risk of pre premature death, especially, uh, particularly with heart disease, they say. That's interesting. Our takeaway is that it's best to prevent weight gain at younger ages to reduce the risk of premature death later in life. In other words, get and stay at your ideal weight in your 20s and 30s. 
and uh, the world will have more than 250 million obese kids by 2030. That's very distressing. Yeah, and this is, of course, uh, in the fat uh, tissues is where we hide all the little things. That's where we store toxins. Many of us yeah. put on fat to sequester toxins so out of the So are the toxins part of the problem that... You know, exactly. now you have 20 pounds of extra fat or maybe 50 or 100 pounds, and it's sitting there year after year. And what's happening is these toxins keep accumulating. You don't get rid of them. Weight gain from the mid-20s into middle age was associated with increased risk of mortality when compared to people who remained at normal weight throughout their life. But weight loss in middle and older age was significantly related to increased mortality. This is an interesting study. And uh, although obesity is a major health problem in the United States, in the U.S., 38% of women and 36% of men were clinically obese in 2016. And that's been on the, on the rise yeah. since 75. It also says unintentional weight loss could be a sign of underlying conditions like diabetes or cancer, especially in later life. Mm -hmm. So the first message is try not to gain weight when you're young and in old age focus on maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, weight is a secondary consideration. So you really don't want to gain the weight. I've noticed in the last uh, two years since we really have cut back even more on carbohydrates, mm -hmm. my weight has dropped. I'm usually being 174. For the last year, year and a half, I've been around 168, 170. Right. And I feel better. But if you do hold on to a little weight and you're older, it might be a little, a little cushion. That's true. You know? Yep. But hey, that's our show, guys. Thanks for sticking around. We'll, we'll see, see you next week. We'll see you next time. Have Bye. a great day.